Part A of the first question of the 2014 AP Computer Science exam involves writing a method called ScrambleWord. And ScrambleWord takes a given word and returns a string that contains a scrambled version of the word according to the following rules. We have the scrambling process begins at the first letter of the word and continues from left to right. If two consecutive letters consist of an A followed by a letter that is not an A, then the two letters are swapped in the resulting string. Once the letters in two adjacent positions have been swapped, neither of those two positions can be involved in a future swap. And the following table is going to show several examples of possible values for the parameter word, and finally what's going to be returned by an invocation of the method scramble word when you pass that parameter word. So for example, in TAM, T and A will not swap because we need a set that consists of A followed by a letter that is not A. So T is not A, so it's not going to work. Then we need, then we move on to A and N. They will swap N and A, and then we're done because we can't involve those letters in any more swaps. For the second word, we're going to swap this A and B. We won't swap R and A. We will swap A and C. We won't swap C and A. We will swap A and D. We won't swap D and A. We will swap A and B. We won't swap B and R. Well, we can't swap B and R because uh, they're not going to be involved in the set. Um, and we're not going to swap R and A. So here's some notes. These are actually pretty important to note. Assume that the classes listed in the appendices have been imported where appropriate. So unless otherwise noted in the question, assume that par parameters and method calls are not null and that methods are called only when their preconditions are satisfied. That's pretty important because most of the time when you're writing methods for computer science, you want to make sure that um, you're checking to make sure that the if an object is being passed, that is not is it has a non-null value because if you're trying to um, invoke methods on a null object, it can do some bad things, and you can get some null reference exceptions, null pointer exceptions. Um, and then in writing solutions for each question, you may use any of the accessible methods that are listed in classes defined in that question. Writing significant amounts of code that can be replaced by a call to one of these methods may not receive full credit. Anytime you're looking at a class, it's really important just to look at the methods and familiarize yourselves with them or any sort of instance fields that are available because that's, you're probably going to want to use those in your answers. Let's go ahead and write our method. So we want to complete scramble word. We want to scramble a given word. And we're past, we're past a parameter word, which is the word to be scrambled, and we're going to return the scrambled word, which could possibly be equal to word if there's no swaps to be made. The precondition, this is what you can assume is true before the method is invoked, word is either an empty string or contains only uppercase letters. The post condition is that the string return was created from word as follows, so it just meets the each of the criteria that we just discussed. Public visibility, static method, returns a string called scramble word, and we're past one parameter, which is a string called word. Let's just make an outline of what we want to do. We want to iterate through the characters in Word. And we'll discuss more about that in a second because we're going to do that in a special way. We have an A followed by not A. Swap those two characters. And then we always want to make sure that we're returning uh, the string. So we'll return Word again. Now, something to keep in mind about this question is that strings are immutable in Java, meaning that we can't just directly modify its contents. What, something we can do, though, is destroy the original string and create a new one, which is what we're going to be doing. Anytime you want to make a new string or you want to move around letters, it makes sense to use the substring method and break up the string that you initially have into string, like smaller segments and then uh, move them around and shuffle them to reconstruct your new string. We have to consider that we're always going to be comparing two consecutive letters. We want to we don't want to get in, we don't want to end up doing something like having any out of bounds errors. Something that might make sense here is to start at index 1 in word and compare the index that we're currently on with the index prior to it. And we say if the current index is not equal to a and the previous index is not equal to a. As long as we start at one and we go to the end of the and we go to the last index of the string, we're guaranteed not to get we're guaranteed not to run into any out of bounds exceptions. So we'll write our for loop like this. We're going to initialize our counting variable index 
and assign a value of 1. Then we'll say while index is less than word.length. And that's because the last, the last index in any string is going to be the length of the string minus 1, unless it's a null string. It, we're guaranteed to never go past the bounds of the string. Then we'll increment index by 1 with each iteration of the for loop. And we're possibly going to be doing a bit more to index, but we'll find out about that in a second. Set up some curly braces here. Put some stuff inside. We know that we're going to be returning words, so we might as well just fill that in as well. So here's where we have to decide what our if statement, what our condition is going to be. When do we know that we're actually going to be swapping something? If we have an A followed by a not A. The idea is that we're going to compare the, the value at the current index to the value at the prior index. So we'll say if word.substring index minus one index dot equals a and word dot substring index index plus one does not equal a and to to, when we say not equal, we can write that like this. We can put an exclamation point in front of the second condition. So let's explain what's happening here. We're, so we're saying if word.substring index minus one comma index. If you remember this, the, the method substring of the string class is passed, um, is passed either one or two parameters. If you pass two parameters, it returns a string that is um, every character in the in this string from index minus one inclusive to index exclusive. So it's not going to include index. So in essence, this is just going to be um, the letter prior to index. So we're saying if the letter prior to index equals A and the opposite of the letter at index is equal to A. So just putting uh, this exclamation point in front of it um, will means that it is not equal to A. That's when we want to swap those two characters. So now we actually need to reconstruct the string. And we can do that by invoking substring more. The way you want to think about it is that we're going to be taking, we're going to be splitting up the string into four parts and, re and reassigning those four parts to word. We're going to say that there's the part of the string that's prior to the character that we're trying to swap. Then there's the first character we're trying to swap, the second character we're trying to swap, and every character after the second character we're trying to swap. For example, if we wanted to switch, if we were looking to swap A and D in this string, we'd have a substring that is all the characters before A, like that. We'd have the substring of the first character we're trying to swap, this A. The second character we're trying to swap, which is this D. Then all the characters after the D, A, B, R, A. And the idea is that when we reconstruct the string, we're going to be saying that the new string is equal to this string, everything prior to the first character we're trying to swap, plus the second character we're trying to swap, plus the first character we're trying to swap, plus everything after the second character we're trying to swap. Word, we want word.substring0 to index minus 1. So what we're saying is we want everything from the 0th index to the character prior to the A we're trying to swap plus word.substring index to index plus one. So basically we're just trying to capture the character at index. So that's the second character we're trying to swap. Plus, now we have to capture the first character we're trying to swap, which is always just gonna be A. So that's gonna be 
index minus word.substring index minus one to index. We alternatively just could have put a string A there because we always know that that's gonna be the, the string there, but uh, for the sake of consistency, we'll just invoke substring again. And finally, we'll have word.substring. we'll have word.substring index plus one. And that's gonna capture everything all the way to the end of the string. If you only pass one parameter to substring, it returns every character. It returns the string starting with the character at whatever parameter you pass all the way to the end of the string. So we could just do something like this where we say index plus one to word.length but that, that's just redundant. Instead, we can just make it so that we're passing one parameter, the character we want to start at. So this will actually construct the new string the way we want it. So everything prior to the A we're trying to swap, the letter after A that we're trying to swap, the A that we're trying to swap, and then every character after the second character we're trying to swap. And one more thing we have to do is we have to meet this uh, last condition, which is once the letters in two adjacent positions have been swapped, neither of those two positions can be involved in a future swap. So a good way to do that would just be to increase index by one additionally, in addition to um, the normal incrementing of the counting variable index in the for loop. That way, if we end up swapping something like, for example, this A and this D, um, we're going to be adding two to index total, which means that we're going to end up skipping this uh, character here entirely. So we'll never have to swap those two again.